all night in late June. Mike Corey, Bob Shriver, and Quint Kesnick just saw the girls' championship game. Congratulations to the Gators with the win over ABC. How about what we have in store here in this game tonight? They graduated about 10 Division I guys this year. They're playing with all underclassmen. Joe's committed to Richmond, who's coach is here today and then for the Flyers Charles Balsamo is one of the best players in the country he is a rising senior incredible attackman left-handed headed to Duke University obviously one of the top programs in the country just watch some of these highlights of Charles playing lacrosse this was earlier today Great with the ball and without the ball as we just witnessed there. One beautiful score one on one and then a lovely feed inside. He's one of the best out here tonight. So we'll see what happens. Opening face off underway. Flyers win it. This is pool play action. All right. Significance of this game here tonight, Bob, throughout this tournament as we get ready for semifinal and championship Friday. Well, the winner of this game will be in the playoffs quarterfinals tomorrow. And the loser still has an opportunity to be in the quarterfinals because there's going to be seven in the quarters and then one at large team, and it'll be based on goal differential. Differential, excuse me. So we're going to see how it all shakes out here at the end of tonight uh, before tomorrow. 10 o'clock at 11 o'clock a.m. is the quarterfinals, and the Flyers off to the fast start with Aiden Lau with the goal to get things started. And look at how big number 13, Jack Flaherty, headed to the Naval Academy, makes that beautiful field into feed, excuse me, into Jake, who handles the ball under pressure, turns and shoots before the slide gets to him. Team like Chaminade, the ball back without ever getting your team's ball on the offensive end. Jack Flaherty had the assist on that first goal for the Flyers tonight. And Balsamo now controls at five. Oh, what a spin move as he shoots and scores. How special is that? Well, what's special about it is how he, Charles, watch him take the defensive pressure. Watch this. And the defensive pressure on his strong hand allows him. Watch him feel this pressure, and he'll roll. Watch this. There's a the pressure on his top hand, and he just makes a beautiful inside roll. Watch his shot. Drops his stick throws up into the corner. Well, now we see very well. Uh, Connor Busick, head coach of Cornell. Bill Tierney, head coach of Denver. Earlier this afternoon, over 100 college coaches here today on the men's side evaluating. Oh. Number three, Ryan Ladolfi. He also has great size and, and vision as well. Beautiful cut by Gavin Creo. And that was the difference last year, of course. Uh, nobody was really allowed here at all. So, I mean, we saw minimal, if that. Um, pretty impressive what you guys have put together with the amount of talent that's out here to draw that kind of collaboration of the nation's uh, best teams in college to witness this. <laughs> Number five for Billy Malvern, Irish. Billy Irish. He also is a rising junior. Watch this play. Billy just steps down to about 12, 13 yards and blasts this thing. He's coming in out of the box. He's got a little speed underneath him. Number seven keeps backing up, so Billy just says, okay, I'll shoot. And he threw In terms of Malvern on Long Island, in terms of Chaminade, I mean, that, that's where it's born, the backyard and the rec program. And if they get such a great experience, which many of them do, as this shot is scored here by Ryan Falkenstein to tie things up at three. Well, we're seeing some of these. The midi position is the one Coach McAvoy said was, you know, the one with the most experience coming back for Malvern, and the middies have scored their three goals. Nice play by Falkenstein there. We had Colin Krause earlier. Joe Sheridan before that. That was a wicked, wicked left-handed shot, level change. He brings it back to the near side. Uh, gorgeous shot by a 2023, who's gonna get himself noticed by some college coaches. With Shutting off adjacent guys and double teaming the face-off man with the ball. And now they have a beautiful and settled opportunity. Balsamo, the Duke commit. Over to Burns and then a shot, score it. 
for Christian Rodriguez. There's nothing more exciting to watch in the game of lacrosse and these unsettles. We had a couple incredible unsettled goals earlier by the girls' championship game. And here, beautiful classic four on three, number six, Thomas Hom throws it down, excuse me, not Thomas Hom, Matthew Burns throws it down to Christian Rodriguez. The Flyers coach, he's been working for the Flyers for over 30 years. Coach Jack Moran's main man. Oh, the rebound shot's gonna go in here. As Rodriguez, initial save from Doherty. And Rodriguez gets his second in a row. Flyers five, Malvern prep three, 2.35 to go. Isaanders of Inside Lacrosse who evaluates talent for them said that uh, Bologna, 24 Roman, has had a great summer so far. That was a great play. And what catches eyes is the way he carried that ball up the field with long strides. 15 seconds left here. McCulloch for Malvern Prep gets through two defenders, puts a shot on, and got deflected. It's loose in front, in the crease, the call. Goes over to the Flyers. Five seconds left in this first half. It's been a fun one to watch as they lead it 5-3 after one. Great play by both teams. Aggression, toughness, ground balls getting after it. Some quality individual play. Uh, the team that's impressed me, not, not excuse me, the position that's impressed me the most in this game so far has been the play of the Malvern defense. Pool play game. Winner gets a spot in the quarterfinals tomorrow morning. We'll be back at the half right after this. Hold here, Perry. Hold here, Perry. Now over to Ryan Landolfi. Defender comes over there. Nice play. Melbourne prep. One more. Uh oh. Goalkeeper's out of the cage. Coming around. Shooting and scoring for the Flyers. Brendan Riley. Great pressure on that clearing opportunity for Malvern. They mishandled the ball. Riley picks up this loose ball and just beats goaltender Darty to the front of the cage. Watch. Darty just can't get back in. Almost made that save. Great play. Well, again, to our point, right, Q? I mean, that's that's what they're looking for. They're not so much upset. Oh, okay, gave up that goal. How's he going to respond, right? Now, well, another one goes through here, and it's the Flyers again. And Riley, he's got two in a row. This is guilty. Chris Stats of Chase programs, and these guys are getting ready for college lacrosse, so they're playing modified NCAA rules. And in the NCAA, excuse me, there is Balsamo getting to his strong hand, but in the NCAA rules, you, only, you have to clear the ball in 20 seconds to get it across the midline. Balsamo makes it eight to three Flyers with 13-20. Taft. So that was a heck of a ground ball play by Chris Stats, 31 in blue for Malvern. How about that shot? by John Maka. Puts it in for Malvern Prep to make it a four goal game here with 11.20 and ticking. Gets to his off hand. It looks like he wants to go right handed, but he shows his ability. There's somebody else that spent some time. Opportunity to Malvern to cut this thing to two, but and that can become, that that play right there is a little bit of the inexperience Coach McAvoy talked about. Well, and it's gonna turn the other way as it's Aiden Lau who gets the goal now for the Flyers. He's got two today and potentially a two goal swing right there had they not given up that. Does it seem like it's gonna be enough time here for Melbourne Prep? At the vine. Getting hit, three seconds to go. Corrals it, and that's gonna be the end of the game. 9-7 the final, the Flyers win it to move on to the quarterfinals tomorrow. Flyers McDonough tomorrow morning to see who makes it to the semis.